part of the five thresholds, and then we're going to review um, the five thresholds. But this is your first time I really got into it, and this doesn't have to be a serious one, it's just a way that we learn how to share our grief on campus um, with our friends and our classmates, um, and will help us um, after we graduate also just how to have casual conversations about spiritual things in the future. And um, so if someone that was here last week want to review us on what the five thresholds are. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the thresholds are different stages in people's spiritual walks that everybody goes through um, in coming to know Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So, like Grace said, the last week they requested that on the Zoom or the video or whatever that or echo back or whatever everyone said. Um, but yeah, what Grace said is that it's just the stages in which people go through um, their spiritual journey, basically, right? So, um, all of us are at different points in our in our walk. Um, we're talking about people who haven't accepted Christ yet, and so um, for us, if we're talking to someone or a friend, um, and I think it's important for us to know where they're at. Um, and so, if there's someone that maybe they had a really poor experience with church in the past, so maybe they have a really interesting um, background where um, maybe they were hurt by the church, and um, maybe they don't trust Christians, right? We have all met people like that who don't really have. Um, trusting Christians, they don't really want anything to do with it. But we also have friends who, maybe they're really, uh, the second threshold is curiosity, the first one is trust, the second one is curiosity, um, or someone who maybe is interested in Christianity, maybe they um, didn't grow up with that background, or they're curious if you say that word, what you mean by that. Um, and then the third one is open, so um, they've heard about Christianity and they're open to, if this is true, um, what would that mean? I would be open to maybe changing, right? Open to change. Um, and third, the fourth one is seeking. So that's someone who's you uh, maybe shared uh, the gospel with them. Uh, they're curious about it. They're open to change. Like, yeah, I believe this is maybe true. And I'm trying to figure out what that means in my life. Uh, and then they actually start seeking. So maybe they start reading the Bible with you. Um, they start going to church with you. They start um, coming to your, like, your songers or your house, something like that. And so they're actively um, trying to find if this is true, what it means to their life, and um, how they can apply it to their life. And then the fifth one is, is following, so they actually make a decision to follow Christ. So um, last week, um, Missy and I and Kay were um, on campus with, um, like, sharing the gospel, and a girl, um, I asked her, like, what her spiritual background was, and, and she grew up, kind of grew up in a hospital, and I asked her, um, well, what is it? What is it? And if we were to, if your roommate were to ask you what it means to become a Christian, what would you say? She's like, well, first, it would have to be, like, open. I'm like, oh, and she, like, literally went through, like, the five thresholds, which is really funny. Um, and so, and I asked her where she was, and she's like, to be honest, like, I, like, there's just something stopping me. I haven't put my faith in Christ yet. And she's like, I have a lot of questions, um, but I just haven't made that decision yet. Um, and so, it was interesting because we had talked about it. She literally, like, put every point. And so she's at the point where she... Um, maybe it is the truth, um, but she, uh, there's something that's stopping her, right? That decision to put her, her faith in Christ, the decision to um, not make herself the, the uh, center of her life. And so, um, yeah, we're hoping that she becomes a follower of Christ, but, and that is helpful. And when we have conversations in the future, she's um, open to hanging out with us. And so, um, in the future, um, it's, it's important that we ask questions to kind of help her to see where she's at and what's stopping her. And um, so the last um, question I left her with before we um, went on with the rest of our day, if there's one question that God could answer in your life, um, what would that be? So if there's one thing that would stop you from putting your baby in Christ, what would that be? Um, and so that's the question we're going to talk about the next time we meet up. But um, yeah, so the questions like that are important. That's kind of what the gist of our conversation today will be. Um, it's why we have questions and what those questions should be when we're um, meeting someone who um, is interested in growing their relationship with God. So the handout that I'm sitting on currently that's like little five thresholds, um, on the back of it has some different um, qualities and some, um, the very, and the, the bold part of some questions or some things to be thinking of um, with them. And so um, let me know when you get to that point. The back and just, um, so the first one is trust, and then the bold part there is um, how we 
that develop a relationship with someone who we need to build trust with. So how do we do that when we invite to eat, hang out, and do everyday activities? Does everyone do that? Cool. Um, so we're going to talk about that for a second, and then we'll talk about the second one that I sent you. This one that we're looking at is the one from last week. If you want a paper copy there in the back um, on the resource table. But um, how we kind of, what questions to ask, and this is where y'all get to um, be vocal and respond. And the very said at the beginning, I really like people to respond when we talk, because this is a group effort, and we all have different experiences and different backgrounds. And, and I think the cool part of going out with people every week and sharing the gospel is that we get to hear different ways how to do that. And so the, when we think about the trust threshold, we have just talked about um, how we develop that relationship just do normal things with them. And we love them, right? Like, people are not just projects, right? they're people, and so we want them to feel loved, we want them to feel heard, and we want to get to know them. And, and so it's things that you would do with normal people, because um, they are normal people. So um, that's the, the trust threshold for people who um, and it's interesting because you don't want to, it's an interesting dance sometimes with people who come from those backgrounds because they maybe are a little wary of you because they know you're a Christian, but they really like, like, you can talk with you or something like that. And so um, you want them to, you want to be able and be discerning of where they're at and um, how much they trust you. So, for curiosity, um, so what? Questions, right? This is when we start asking them questions to kind of see where they're at and kind of help those, right? So they're becoming from an indifferent to curious. Um, and so instead of, I think our tendency sometimes as Christians is that um, we maybe in youth groups have our like go to Jesus answers. Um, and so when people have questions like, well, what do you think about this major event in history? Like, what do you think about Adam and Do you think? They were actually the only two people that God created and that all people come from them. Right? So sometimes people will start with really abstract questions, but our goal in that state is to not try to answer every abstract thought that they have or every um, maybe uh, apologetic style question that they have. Our goal is to help them find answers or ask questions that help them kind of see where their heart is, right? So questions that um, about their spiritual gra- background, like personally making decisions of faith or not making decisions of faith, um, questions that they wanted to ask about Christianity. Um, because I think the tendency sometimes is to want to answer their intellectual questions, um, but they want to shy away from their personal questions and things that they've actually made um, decisions about and their experiences with. So trying to help them go from kind of intellectual questions to heart questions. And some people actually have intellectual questions, and that's great. And we get to answer those or help them um, find those answers in scripture and in truth. Um, but other times, um, maybe they have been hurt and they don't really want to talk about personal things, and so they put up guards with more intellectual questions. You just kind of have to ask to get to know that person. Um, all of these, again, are kind of dependent on the person. Um, so change, kind of helping someone see if they would be open to change. Um, it's that question I kind of asked that girl on campus earlier this week is what would it take for you to make a personal change to trust Jesus? And so those kind of questions is what would it take or what's the one thing stop for you? What's the one question um, God can answer? What's the one um, thing you would see in your life? Um, I had a friend who worked with a lot of South Asians and they would ask like what's one uh, prayer that God answered you'd be open to, to learn more. Um, and so those are questions that we would ask for someone for that question. So seeking, um, so what are some things that you think if someone was in the seeking threshold, some things you would do or some questions that you would ask in that question? Would you like to uh, read the scriptures together? Yeah, like what do you, would you want to study the Bible, right? Um, and so someone who's seeking truth, well, we want to interact with the truth. Um, and so we kind of talked about this last week too, but um, I think sometimes we assume that people learn through osmosis, like, oh, I know how to read my Bible, or maybe they grew up in a Christian home, and uh, they should just know how to read it, they should know how to find out truth for themselves. If you've ever sat in your college math class and you just assume that you would learn it because you're in your math class, that doesn't work, right? Like, no one has ever learned it by just, like, putting the book on their face. That doesn't work. And so we need to be taught how to read and how to find truth. Um, and um, there's a lot of culture around um, what we believe. And so even within ourselves, our, our 
Christian culture, and so people who didn't grow up with that um, or have questions about it need to be taught um, how to navigate those things. And so um, teaching them how to pray, teaching them how to um, read scripture, define truth, um, being able to have really intentional time with them, whether it's team that's a really urgent time in their life, but they really want to know what's true. Um, and so to be able to make the time with them to be able to answer those things. Um, and then uh, following, when someone chooses to follow Christ, like, this is not the last step. This is really the first step in their journey. And so we want to help them um, be able to um, create good habits and good disciplines in their life that will help them grow in the future. And so what are some things that you would do with someone who they decided to follow Christ? There's two links, but the first link that you're wanting us to look at now, you got to request access for. Oh, so I pull things. Hey, Ian, can you uh, send in the group me the asking spiritual questions document and a way that they can read it? And um, we can go ahead and read, and then we'll, um, you know, resend that. I don't know why it's. Um, but can you have your Bible open? If you would read Luke 10, 25 through 37 for us. Passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, 
came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expenses you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Okay, so what do we see in that story? Or what is this a good example of? It's okay, this is a safe place where you can answer. There's no wrong answer. A test of knowledge, but also a test of understanding. Yeah, so this guy is asking Jesus questions, right? And what is Jesus responding with? He's responding with more questions. Like he tells him a story and he asks him questions about those things. And so um, we often see in scripture, um, there's 25 occasions where Jesus is, the, um, is asked a direct, a direct question. Um, and he usually does not give a direct response. He usually asks, um, he has a statement or a question that he'll ask after um, and so it allows, um, what the, it does is it allows an opportunity for a deeper conversation and not just a, um, a simple answer, right? So it allows him to be able then to have a deeper conversation with it and really get to heart issues instead of just the one question. And um, so answering a question with a question allowed him to be able to have more than one conversation with it and allowed him to have a much deeper one. And um, so in that, we see that, um, the guy asked him um, kind of a simple one, right? He's a, um, a kind of a simple question, right? And so Jesus responds with questions that go deeper into um, deeper into his heart. So, um, and we see that the guy wasn't satisfied. So if you we were going to put um, this man into a category, maybe where would we put him? We were going to put him into one of the thresholds. Yeah, do you think he trusts? Why would you put him in the trust like, um, category? Because I feel like he was testing Jesus mm-hmm. and it was more of a confrontational thing. Mm-hmm. And so he was kind of looking to kind of like, oh, be wrong, Jesus, you know? And then he wasn't mm-hmm. satisfied with Jesus' answer. And so I don't think he trusted him very much. So yeah. I think we get that a lot in kind of more confrontational stuff. Mm-hmm. Somebody be like, oh, well, if God exists, then why is there bad enough? You know, yeah. It's like that. You're not open. You're not seeking. Yeah. So we don't know exactly where he was, but that's a good guess that we would think that maybe he was a Jewish scholar. The um, the Jewish people were not liking what Jesus was saying, and they were trying to. And um, we see in scripture that they were trying to um, make him contradict himself or to um, catch himself lying or saying things that um, against the Jewish law. And so maybe that is true. Maybe he was curious. We don't know, but we can tell by the tone, right? When we're talking to people, the tone in which they ask questions is important. So if they're saying like, well, "What about this?" and it's like maybe more aggressive, well, maybe they don't. It's not a genuine question. But sometimes people are genuinely, "Well, what about this?" And so you can kind of see. Um, but um, when the Jewish God was asking those questions, um, Jesus um, told a story, and so I think that's a good way too, but also to be able to um, go deeper into people's cover, um, the conversation with people is to tell them stories, your personal stories, or a time in your life when you've seen um, God answer things or answer questions, or you've seen what they're talking about displayed in your life, and so uh, to not be afraid to to bring in stories and to bring other people's experiences into your life also um, is really important. But um, I highlighted this for us in our, our um, handout, but Jesus resisted the temptation to launch into a passionate explanation of why, of what he was trying to say, right? So he's not there, he's not taking a defensive tone. Um, and so in our, um, a lot of our groups, we've been reading a book together, it's called I Once Was Lost. Um, and so in that we, uh, if y'all read this week, 
Did anyone read the section where he talked about what our attitude should be when someone um, is very defensive, how to take a response to a defensive tone? Does anyone remember that? Okay, it's in, I think, chapter like two, um, but it's a really good thing if y'all want to go back and read that this week of what our attitude should be when someone is defensive. And I think Jesus does a really good job here um, of doing an example for that. So that's a little bit of homework this week, is to go and read that and to see what our response uh, to someone being defensive should be. Um, and then um, to continue at the end, he was, um, when he's talking about like the righteousness, he goes from like an intellectual question to more of a question on who is right, and he wanted to be uh, to find the right or the wrong answer. And we often see that also when we're sharing on campus. And so um, he was uh, able to uh, admit that he was able to have the, the Jewish scholar admit that um, it wasn't about um, righteousness, but it was about um, how we live, right? So it wasn't about like our knowledge, but it was about how we actually live out our life. And so we meet people like that also on campus of people who um, maybe know the right things, but they don't live out the things that Jesus has told them to do. Um, so just three principles, and then we'll go into actually doing some practice and some activities. Um, but um, questions can start a conversation. We see that, and um, if you flip to the, the second page of your handout, um, so um, you don't have to wait until people ask you questions before you start asking them questions. Um, and we can do that with anyone. We can do it with someone in our class, our roommate, our friends. And if you don't know someone with spiritual background, it's, it's a part of our lives, right? So it's okay to ask them, well, what about you? Um, and so we want to be able to genuinely care about their lives. We're not doing this just because we have an agenda when we talk to someone. Um, and so what questions do in spiritual conversations? So, um, again, they open it up to genuine conversation. Um, they can penetrate the heart of the issue. So asking clarifying questions instead of always giving um, a direct response can help um, reveal maybe the heart of what they're trying to say. Um, and then it also clarifies, I think, um, we've all learned that communication seems like a simple concept, but it can be difficult at times. Um, so always asking clarifying questions. Because um, you could go and you could think you're having a great conversation and maybe look back in hindsight and we are we're on really different spectrums here. Um, and you realize that um, the first question they asked you, um, they weren't actually curious about at all. They just like panicked and like, told you this thing. Um, and so we also know that um, Clarifying questions are always important. Um, and then, like, I say that too when we use terms like um, grace or gospel or Jesus or love or things like that. All the words that we tend to use in Christian culture, um, people outside of our um, our culture maybe don't have the same definition for that word. And so I say um, to ask clarifying questions, but also clarify the terms that you use when you talk to people. So are there any questions on that? Okay. Do you have an experience where you felt like that person didn't trust you and what you were saying? Yeah, I think oftentimes we have experiences where people don't trust what we're saying. And um, remember, I usually go back and I try to get to know them as a person. And so um, I think in our conversations, we go with the intention of having a spiritual conversation. But if the person you're talking to doesn't want to talk about that, um, I, the best response I've seen is, well, that's okay. I, I, I still want to get to know you as a person. Um, and so I think we can not be afraid of, of saying that, but we are. We genuinely care about people. And the kindest thing in our mind to do to talk to them is about where they are spiritually, and um, that they maybe don't see it that way. And so if we get to know them as a person, I think that's the appropriate response. Um, and so, yeah. On campus, if someone is like, hey, like, we're going around talking about spiritual things, you might be talking, you know, like, and you, get, you talk to them about their name and their major, and you ask about their spiritual background, and like, I'm not really comfortable talking about that. Like, okay, well, I still want to get to know you. Um, and I've seen it before where people are okay with that, and so kind of start from there and start where they'll let you. And some people will talk to you, and that's okay. So, yeah. That was a good question. Any more? Great. Okay, so now, um, and we're all pretty much in pairs. Um, Hunter, or Anna, if you want to be with Eli, we need pairs for this. Old man's getting up off the floor. It's great. 
Um, but we are going to practice um, having a conversation with someone um, and asking them questions about themselves. And so we're all going to start, uh, for this practice, we're going to start with maybe not trusting the person. Um, and so if you don't know the person you're with super well, it could be easier, but if not, um, again, when we do um, role plays like this, we always pretend to be someone that we actually know, or not some fictional character from the far, like, far reaches of our imagination. We're real people because we want to practice having real conversations. Um, I say that to some of our friends who have really good imaginations. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go and we're going <laughs> to um, practice having a conversation with someone who um, is in the first special, right? So maybe they don't trust you quite yet um, in your intentions, but your goal is to be able to um, ask questions to help them get to the next um, special. Does that make sense? Um, so if you haven't been here before, the person with you has, and so they can start, and then you can, we'll flip flop. And, um, and after that, I'll ask you to do a different threshold. Um, so you're just practicing the, the trust one, and then we'll switch and we'll try a different threshold. A Jamal holds. Yeah. Unlike last week, this is like an actual conversation. Yeah, this is an actual conversation. So I'll give you a little bit longer this time. Um, I'll give you to do that. I'll give you like um, five, ten minutes. So um, you won't get to the whole gospel um, sharing, maybe. Yeah, and but that's okay. We'll give you more time later to practice that. So right now you um, have just met this person. They're a stranger, and maybe they're a little bit resistant to you talking, and you're gonna ask questions. So, are there any questions so far? Do you know what you're doing? Cameron, can you tell me what you're doing? Say we're having a conversation with someone who's probably in the trust category, and they need to be a real person, not just a figment of my imagination, like the other voices. And so you have to do any conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Okay, so I'll let y'all do that really quickly, and I'll go around and listen, and if y'all have questions or need clarification, I'll be here.
people who are curious about Christianity would ask, right? So, um, so that's kind of why I was what found something. Um, and so um, this is for, and your goal um, as a response person is not to be able to answer all the questions, but ask them kind of the why behind those questions, if you get my point. And so, um, yeah, we'll give you another five minutes and you'll um, move on to that curious um, threshold and what questions you would ask someone there. You can do it, Garrett. Partner asked this time. So we'll go to our group first. Okay. 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 Ok
Yeah, like right off the bat, he's like, I'm Christian, just so you know, <laughs> you don't think I'm throwing anything on you. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we definitely want to be upfront and not ashamed that we are Christians, yeah. that we are curious about what they think. I think Hunter kind of alluded to a good question that a lot of people have on campus, um, or just like a, a mindset that a lot of people have on campus, is the idea of relativism. So a lot of people will say it's kind of um, whatever you think God is, or whoever God is to you, that's good for you, and whoever God is to me, that's good for me. And, and so those are a lot of question, questions that we'll get on campus, um, and just kind of seeing um, how did you get to that point, or um, things like that. Those are always some good follow-ups. Eli has graciously volunteered to um, do an example of a gospel presentation with us. So. Hi, everyone. Did Eli know that he volunteered? Yeah, like 20 seconds ago. Oh. <laughs> yeah, um, so um, every week we'll, um, we use different tools to be able to share the gospel. In fact, the one that we use is three circles. Um, we have stickers on the back, in the back table if you want some stickers. Um, with helping explain that diagram, um, but um, the best tool to share the gospel is just the tool that you know how to use. Um, and so Eli is going to give us an example of um, the three circles demonstration. And so um, three circles just kind of um, illustrates uh, how to share the gospel in simple ways. And so um, he's going to do that. You're just going to start from, um, hey, can I share the gospel with you? And go through that. And so you've already gotten to know me and talk to me and all that. Um, and so now you're just going to share the bus. Of course, I just did this one. It's been mm -hmm. months since I've done this yeah, diagram. Some of us are rusty, and that's okay. Yeah, so if I forget something, just... I'm, I'm ready for you to help yeah. you out. Mm -hmm. I'll call you out anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Whatever color you want to use. Uh, so, uh, can I show you the thing? Yeah, you can show me the three. All right. So, uh, I believe that... I believe, I, could, I, believe I, I need a new marker. I believe I need a new marker. Okay. I believe that in the beginning, God made this earth and everything was great. And I'm an awful drawer, but there's a heart. We, uh, we're in this perfect world and everything was exactly like it was supposed to be, but there was one rule that God said about it. He was like, don't eat of this fruit. And of course, that's exactly what we did because we're not good people sometimes. I think we can all agree that not everybody's perfect. Yeah. So that was immediately kind of broken a little bit. And in that sin, we were banished to a different place of this broken world that we are now in. And I think you can agree with Corona as the obvious example that there's some broken things going on in the world. People are corrupted and politics are crazy. You know, there's things that are just not fun. And here we are in this new world because we disobeyed the one rule and not everything's perfect anymore. Mm -hmm. I think most people realize that since this world is broken, we don't really want to be here all the time. And so they're trying to escape it through things like alcohol or like drugs and stuff. But there's also things like charity where we try to make ourselves feel better, but most of the times that's just done out of selfish wanting to feel better about themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. So we try to escape these things, the world through these, but we're not really going in the right direction. So we always kind of fall back into orbit because the gravity pulls us back. So since we're kind of stuck here and we don't really have a choice about it, God over here in our perfect world that we kind of banished ourselves from looks over and he's not just like, oh, they did this to themselves. Like, oh, well, yeah. you know, <laughs> guess that's it. He was like, I miss these people and I made them to be here with me. So he came up with a plan. He descended from heaven and then rose back up to earth with us as a human, like we are. He rose as a man in the form of Jesus Christ. And through Jesus, he came into our world and suffered everything we suffered and just went through all of that, but he did it the right way. He did it God's way. And he didn't do the sin like eating the fruit like we did. So he was here unjustly, but he chose to be. In doing so, he took all of the like, brokenness we caused, all of this trouble, and he erased it for his, his son, who died for us. So through that, in this pathway that God took to get to us, he purified us so that we could take the same pathway back. And we could get back to this earth 
that's perfect with God can be there with him. So now, if we choose to follow Christ, we live our life here, but we can also move back to the heaven or perfect place with God eventually once we do that. However, once we accept God, we usually don't really want to stay here because we want to try and kind of follow what Jesus did and go back to this world, follow the circle again, and try and bring some other people with us. Yeah, so I will summarize what Eli said for our people who are new, right? So this is just a simple illustration, and so all of us will say it a little differently, but there's some core elements in it. And so the first circle, the core element is that um, God is perfect, right? And it's a perfect relationship with people, right? And so um, when God first created the world, he created a perfectly and perfect relationship with people. Um, but... And the second circle always represents brokenness, so the brokenness that we see in the world, right? So that people are sinful. And um, sin, right, is anything that we say, do, act, think that goes against God, that's disobedient to God. Um, and we try to fix it in a lot of different ways, but none of those things make us perfect, and none of those things put us in the right standing before God. Um, but God, in His goodness, in His holiness, and His power, um, didn't want to leave us separated. He created a way for us to come back through Jesus, and there's only one way to come back, and that's through faith in Jesus. Um, and so a little, uh, I'll do an addition to yours, Eli. Um, so some questions that we can ask or some um, things that we can do. Um, we can always ask people how they um, think people try to escape brokenness or how they try to fix the things of the world. Sorry, I'm trying to open this. Okay, now we know no, no, you're good, yeah. So we can ask questions there. We also can do a, our ABCs here. Right, so how someone can accept Christ is they admit they're imperfect, they believe in Christ and what he did, and they commit to following him. And we also can, um, what you are talking about, you can summarize through the words grow and go. So we grow in our relationship with him, right? Um, faith in Jesus is not the end, it's the start. And we go back and tell people who... Um, don't have a relationship with God, how they have a relationship with God. Um, and so, um, really quickly, we'll let you practice that, and that'll be the last thing that we do. Um, and so this is your first time your partner will share with you. And um, they'll just go through an example of a gospel presentation, or if you've been before, but you need to practice, um, you'll be the one who um, will share with your partner. Um, and so, so, do you need to do that on like, a phone app or a notebook card? Just let me know. Um, but yeah, that will be the last thing that we'll do. We'll just get through our gospel presentation and it will be done for the day. Are there any questions on that before y'all break up into your pairs? Okay, great. So I'll give y'all another probably like two or three minutes um, to be able to share um, three circles with someone and then we'll come back together and I'll give you like announcements for next week and then um, we'll be done for the day.